Following his resurrection, Jesus appeared to his disciples, but one of them, Thomas, was not there. After the resurrection, we know some did not believe, some doubted, even though others in the same group were recognizing the risen Lord. After eight days, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas with them. Jesus came, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace to you. Then he said to Thomas, Reach your finger here and look at my hands, and reach your hand here and put it into my side. Do not be unbelieving, but believing. But there's no hint that Thomas does touch him. You see, Thomas doesn't insist on proof. He actually believes the word of Jesus. See, I think of Thomas as a type of Christian who spanned the first and second generations because the Christians of the first generation believed because of what they saw. In the second generation, it was a question of belief because you heard. So it was seeing versus the word. But remember that Jesus says to Thomas, blessed are those who believe even though they have not seen. Thomas is often referred to as Doubting Thomas. We say Doubting Thomas, we don't say Disbelieving Thomas. And honest doubt is a stimulus to further inquiry, to greater prayer, and, where, and it's quite different to disbelief. That's someone who says, I do not believe in Jesus. Uh, it's quite different to someone who says, I have a lot of questions about Jesus. Thomas just sharpens that dimension of the critical attitude of the first disciples. Some time after Jesus rose from the dead, his disciples returned to their old lives. Peter, one of the twelve, was back in Galilee, working as a fisherman. Peter is doing what he was used to, 
he's doing that exactly in the location where he's used to do it, in the place that's supposed to have the best fishing conditions around the Sea of Galilee, and something goes wrong. He's there for hours upon hours. He catch nothing. Peter is frustrated. I mean, he's just back from Jerusalem after his life turned around, and now he's back to his old profession, and he's not good at it. And it was for a reason. Now, it's not that the lake is different or the fish are gone. It's just that he's different, and it takes time for him to understand that. You cannot abandon your life calling and think that you can go back to your old life and enjoy the same blessings. Jesus appeared on the shore of the lake and told them exactly where to cast their nets so that they could catch fish. It is one of the most beautiful scenes in the scriptures. It is breakfast time, it is early, early in the morning, and what is better than having Jesus right there? Before Jesus was crucified, Peter denied he knew him three times. And now when Jesus asks Peter if he loves him three times, he answers, you know that I love you. Peter at the end of the Gospel of John is a Peter that is bruised, but also refined. It's a Peter that uh, started with a lot of uh, pride and arrogance, and he's very humble at the very end. It's a Peter that started with uh, a lot of uh, ambitions, and, and it's a Peter that is free of any personal plans. It's someone who's totally empty, totally broken, and ready to become a servant. <laughs> 